Hour two Tim. overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. The Leafs were uh, having their locker clean out today. Players speaking, Sheldon Keefe spoke, Kyle Dubas spoke. No Brendan Shanahan, though. We're expected to hear from him later this week, which is the playbook of Masai Ujiri. And we know what happened when Masai waited. He was making moves, and they were moving on Nick Nurse. Now, what it means for the Leafs, I guess we'll find out. Obviously, ownership is going to factor into all of this. And Shanahan, I'm sure, has to present something to the board, possibly multiple options, right? if that hasn't happened already. But uh, the Leafs are out, and Edmonton's out. Like, the Canadian drought is going to push to 30 years. 31. 31, I guess, yeah, because yeah. it's Carlos ended brother will be devastated. Carlos' brother had the Edmonton Oilers, and he's – he knows the game, played the game, and yeah. he was like, Edmonton and Toronto are going to the finals. Well, I said, I think okay, we, Paulo. Okay, let me ask you this. Felt good after the first round. Exactly. Right. Be honest. After the first round, did you not, did it not cross your mind that you could see a pathway for Edmonton and Toronto? Of course! Yes. I think we At all thought. At least one that. of them, for sure, I, I thought. I, I just kind of thought, okay. And then when Toronto got punted, Jamie, I said, there is nothing stopping the Edmonton Oilers right now. But I was wrong. There is one thing that was stopping them. It was their goaltending. Yeah, well, it wasn't good enough. Yeah, it I wasn't good enough. And it's actually looking, it's retrospective analysis, looking back on it, to put your hopes on Jack Campbell and a 24-year-old kid with Mc, McDavid and Dreisaitl in their prime. Crazy stuff. Well, I mean, Campbell actually, when he came in, played well. He might have, I, I actually thought they were going to start him. They could not put Skinner in the net last night. They couldn't take the chance no. of him getting pulled again, and it happened. Yeah. Well, it's crop, I mean, he, it he happened with Swayman, too, in the first round. They said, you know what? We can't take the chance of Allmark letting in a four spot again. And they put in Swayman. It cost them, but they had to at least take the Here's chance. Here's the last one night. thing I'm going to say as a goalie hugger you only notice goaltending when you don't have it. And right now, the $10 million goalie is the only guy that's actually, I mean, I mean he's been, and he yeah, didn't but the start as the guy. He was wearing a baseball kind of cap to start the, the play. The Oilers right. needed some kind of Kemper performance because the Colorado Avalanche were a high-powered offense, yeah, yeah. and they were high-flying, wow. and they just needed a guy to go in but, there and not cost them hockey games, let, and that's what Kemper did last year. Let, mm -hmm. We can dumb it down, but I'll tell you, Darnell Nurse and Cody Ceci were dash three before. Like, yeah, there they was, were swimming There was around. a lot of blame to go around, but you're right. When you look at the goaltending position, you need it. You need quality goaltending. When your team has a little bit of a letdown, you need that big save. That's what I talked about Samson off the first round. He didn't have to be brilliant, but he made big saves at the right time, and the Leafs found a way to get through it. And you, that's, you know what Edmonton needed was the Aiden Hill performance last night. They did. Like, he that's was the really amazing. Good. Of course, he was really good. Like he gave up two muffins early. I never even heard of that guy. Well, well exactly. He he's played there. in Arizona and then went to San Jose and then he's their over. third he string, third fourth yeah. string goalie. Like at the start of the year, if Leonard was available, you know Jonathan Quick sitting there on the bench with a with a hat on while Aiden Hill's going in there. So are they stop. saying Aiden Hill's now our guy? I would assume he has. Well, Larry to be Brassois a... got hurt the other day, and he's it didn't look a... like Larry's coming back. He's not. I no, don't. So believe Aiden Hill's going to be your guy. Aiden Hill's the their guy. But the thing is, it's not a bad thing to have Johnny Quick sitting there. No, I I, I that's hear you. Safety blanket going. That guy's won two cups and a con Smythe. Right. I bet but you Johnny. I bet you bench. Johnny Quick could get it together for two rounds. I'll tell you that. I, I, I would bet on it. Doesn't have to be for two rounds. Because Aiden Hill's going to start the next round. It might be a situation where he hits the ditch and they go, we're going to that guy. That's the options that you need to have if you don't have a Vasilevsky. Right. You know? Well, we haven't mentioned Joseph Wall yet, but I thought that kid played well. Stood on his head on Friday night. I thought he was great. Well, did you like any of the goals? That he gave up? Yeah. I didn't. I what? mean, he's a young kid, but they weren't great. Like, Well, the Cousins one, he screened. It's an overtime yeah, I mean, you know what? It, okay, let's remove. Like I'm trying to remember. Let's the, remove the screening. Aaron Eckblad, kind of a like a one timer. It was kind of like a shovey one timer. It wasn't one, like yeah. It, yeah, it can't go in. Okay. What's the second goal? Remind me. It was Duclair, but I I can't. I was walking. No, it was for Hagee. For Hagee, you're right. Oh, Verhage. it's a one timer on the back door. No chance for that one. Yeah. No okay, so I didn't like that one, and the Cousins one. I get it. It was screened, whatever. But it's the the ones that hit inside and ultimately go in or hit off of you, I don't like. I hear you. And that's that's taking away your driver's license and your age and saying I'm just going to look at this as a goal. I'll and I didn't like that. it. I didn't I'll like grant it. you that. But he also he made some 
great stops. Yeah, he, he did. To, to keep it at two, to get them to overtime. He made some great stops in overtime. Goal turning wasn't the problem. Was not the issue is and, the point. And, you can't score three goals, then that's on you. That's on the players. It's on the offense. Dude, goal, I totally get it. I'm just breaking down what yeah, I right. saw. But just, as a third stringer, he was really good in game four, and I thought he was good in game Moving five. Moving forward, though, you've got a $5 million goalie that – was wearing a baseball yeah. hat here in the playoffs. Well, and that's something Dubas is going to have to answer for. Like the the whole discussion about Kyle and what's going to happen, and it's difficult to get a read on it because today, like he said, he's got to speak with his family. He's right. dealing with a lot of pressure. You could see him, man. He was wearing it. Sure. Like he was freaking out in the press box. Yeah. Like you don't see a lot of GMs do that. And you don't. You also don't see a lot of GMs that got to listen to the BS from people that are in the crowd. Well, that's true in Tampa. I don't even care so much about the Tampa thing, but you know, he was throwing the water bottle around the other night. He's yelling about the puck over the line. He's an emotional guy. He said that he's like, and I don't, I don't have a problem with that personally. I don't. Um, but he said, basically he's either going to be here or he's not going to be working. Right. Like he, he said not to expect him to pop up somewhere else in the next couple of weeks. So I think he's probably coming back. I think that's understandable. I can reason with that. I thought he had a good trade deadline. Well, listen, they won a round. They won a round, which in like, this city and with this team actually means on, something. I know how ridiculous it sounds, but if the bar is literally the lowest it is, it can be in pro sports, and you go over that bar, I've you got, went over that I've bar. Got to be they did go over that bar. I've got to be consistent. When they beat Tampa, I thought he wrote himself a blank check. Now, I, the way they lost in round two has put a little bit of a stain on I don't but it's think not on he's Kyle, got, though. Yeah, I don't think he's got all this leverage, though. They also gave him a dream job when he had no NHL experience, and he's won one round as the GM. This idea that he's going to go in there and demand all of this type of stuff, I don't see it that way. I, I'd be surprised if Shanahan and ownership were like, oh, yeah, of course, you get all of this autonomy <laughs> and all of this money. I think there'd be some pushback there. Uh, let's see what Chris Johnston has to say. About that, CJ, our TSN Hockey Insider, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Um, what is your read on the the Kyle Dubas status and his future here in Toronto? Well, it's quite a bombshell today, to be honest. You know, it, this is the first time I'd heard Kyle talk about some of the stuff he's, you know, had to deal with his family, and, and it introduces an element, I suppose, that, that I hadn't been calculating uh, into this. And so, I, I honestly, my understanding too is, I think there's a few people surprised you know, elsewhere in the Leafs front office about all this. So it's, it's hard to know where, you know, where this all goes. Um, you know, the one thing Kyle did say that, that might have been lost in, in kind of all the revelations during his media availability is that, you know, it's something he expects to play out over a couple of days. So, you know, I don't necessarily think this is going to drag on for a long period of time. But but obviously there's some hard conversations being happen, happening in Kyle's own household. But then obviously the Leafs front office too, as they, they figure out what this is going to look like going forward. So what's your gut tell you, CJ? Kyle Dubas will be the GM of the Maple Leafs? That's kind of where I'm leading, you know, but it's, I don't want to just assume too much. You know, I, I don't have any insight into the specifics of, you know, how hard it was on his family. And maybe, maybe this will be the, you know, we've seen other people do this before, right? It's not the exact same circumstances of Mark Berserman walked away from the Montreal Canadiens. You know, Paul Maurice walked away from the Winnipeg Jets as their head coach because of the strain, you know, that, that the job had placed on their lives working those markets. And I think it's not unreasonable to think that, you know, it's, it's been difficult to work here in Toronto. So my gut tells me, yes, he's back just because he's so tied to everything that's happened here. Um, I don't believe they're necessarily as far away as they, you know, it's a good organization. He's, he, there's, there's a lot of reasons to stay. Um, but you know, that, that family, that the family dynamic, I, I'd be at risk of assuming too much. If I, if I say it's a slam dunk, he'll be back. Why, was Brendan Shanahan not around today? What is your read on that situation? I I think it's a case where, you know, in, in his job, there wasn't much definitively he could say. And so I, I don't, I don't mind that in the sense that, okay, if he waits a couple days until this gets shaken loose, until there's clarity on, on what's going to happen with his GM. I mean, I, I don't know that, that, that a whole lot could have been needed there. You know, I also did like what Dubas said right off the top. He, he said, I don't need anyone to deflect or he doesn't need a shield. I mean, at this stage, he's five years in as a general manager and obviously a couple more beyond that as the assistant GM. I mean, the team that's in place here is there because of decisions he's made and that he's been responsible for. And so, 
you know, I, I don't mind not having the president there to answer for, for the sort of personnel move aspect of it. And then, you know, I think it's your time. We'll get some clarity from Shanahan on, you know, the front office itself. That is different though, right? CJ, right. like in past years, they took a couple days, they came out in lockstep and said, we're doubling down, tripling down, right? We're going back to the well. We believe in these guys, throw everything at us. So they didn't do that this time. So no. that's obviously not the case this time. It would appear so, would it not? Like, should we not be bracing for some sort of change, whether it's Dubas or Keith in particular? Yeah, or Shanahan, be, possibly. We should be bracing for a bomb and potentially multiple bombs. I mean, I, I'm i sure the, the audience is, has only moderate interest in, in hearing about my day, but I've been around a lot of these breakdown days, locker cleaner days, call them what you will. This is the, the by far, I don't even know what second place would be the most unusual day I've, I've, I've spent down there. I mean, it was... In what hours. sense, CJ? Well, it just felt like there wasn't any any order to it, and usually it's quite an orderly exercise. And, and so it, it's a departure from past, yes, because normally it would be Dubas and Shanahan sitting together there taking questions. It, it was a departure just, and it was stretched out over many numbers of hours. It just feels like a lot is up in the air. You know, it just it, it speaks, I think, to kind of where they're at as an organization. I mean, they're hour by hour right now. I mean, we can say with certainty that they don't know who their GM is next season as of right now. And, and obviously there's a whole bunch of, you know, the summer's coming quick because, you know, a product of playing into the second round, it's, it's mid-May and July 1st isn't that far off and there's a lot of business to be done. And so I, I just felt like there's a, still a lot of moving parts here. And so, yes, I think, I think it is clear that, that we should be bracing for something because, you know, even if Kyle Dubas himself comes back, I mean, this is the first time that I'm aware of. He's been on the record even contemplating, you know, trading one of his, his core four or core five or review that, and, and but he didn't just say that. He said that everything's on the table if he's back. That that, you know, which I think is the only way to proceed. Myself, I mean, I'm I'm quite comfortable with with them sticking with Kyle Dubas. I think he's earned the opportunity to, to stick around. But but especially because he's he's you know finally moved off the idea that the that the core of the team is untouchable. I think at a certain point you you really got to try to do it a different way. And it sounds like he wants to do it a different way if he is back. CJ, that's where. The three of us were talking last hour. That was the the biggest interview that stood out for us is just Kyle's comments about his family and the fact that he didn't just lay down and say the core four. I'm I'm married to them. Was there anything else that stood out for you? This uh, you know this you said unique day. Maybe one of the players' comments or lack of comments uh, that you maybe expected and and didn't see or hear. Maybe maybe not huge surprises, but you know, I came away from, for example, Ryan O'Reilly's interview, thinking this is a guy going to July first, as opposed to having his mind on on you know how he can stick around uh, Toronto, which of course is is right as a free agent. You know, John Tavares was pretty clear that that he's not going to want to even entertain waiving a no movement clause that that he wants to finish out the last two years of his contract in Toronto that that he signed here, and you know, I think that. It, it's it's probably newsworthy that Austin Matthews was as firm as he was uh, that that he intends to remain in Toronto and that he wants to get that deal done this summer. Um, you know, it's no no promises baked into that, and I think that the direction of the team will be part of it. Who's making those decisions? Who he's negotiating with? I'll factor into it. But you know, he he was a little firmer than I might have guessed he would be in terms of stating his intention to stay at the Leafs. You know, none of those things again are are they're not going to be the big headlines on any news sites tomorrow, but. You know, those those were some of the things that, that jumped out at me as, as we went through that day. With Chris Johnston, our TSN Hockey Insider. So we referenced that Dubas, for the first time that we can recall on record, uh, did not fully commit to the core of this team. Uh, maybe that includes the coach. You know, maybe maybe the idea that he's going back to the well 100% with Sheldon Keefe could apply to that viewpoint as well. But you mentioned Tavares. He's got a full no move, full, full no trade, and he doesn't sound like he's interested in contemplating waiving that. So he's going to be here. If Matthews is being genuine, then he'll re-sign. He's going to be here. So that leaves Marner, Nylander, Keefe. Is that where your eyes go? Like, do you, and of those three characters, or those three kind of pillars of this organization, um, how would you rank them one, two, three in terms of their security here in Toronto? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I think it's fair to, to sort of zero in on them in particular, just because, you know, Mitch Marner has a no move clause himself that, you know, kicks in July 1st, but until then, you know, they can at least explore the trade market and don't need any, don't need any outside input from, from Mitch or his agent or his family. Um, 
you know, with Nylander, he's got one year left on his deal. So there's a decision one way or another. And Keith is in the same boat. He's got one year on his contract. And of course, you know, he's, he's done a lot of winning with this team in the regular season, but, but, you know, in the playoffs, it hasn't gone as well. And so coach is often the easiest change to be made. So I'd, I'd say, oh, tough, tough call. I'd say one, two, three, most secure is probably Marner. I'm going to say tough one. Uh, then maybe Keith and Nylander, you know, I, it's hard to order them, but I, I will also underline this. I mean, Kyle Davis said everything is on the table. And so mm-hmm. it, these are the more obvious potential. If, if we're looking at a bigger move, these are the more obvious ones. But, I mean, he didn't even rule out trading Austin Matthews, right? And and so as much as mm-hmm. I do think Austin wants to stick around here, and I think that there's a lot of reason for them to want to try to, you know, keep a former 60-goal scorer, hard trophy winner, all those things in the fold. You know, what, what Kyle Dubas said, if we take him literally, was that he, he would – consider anything and so then you, you could get into would they move Matthews um would they move Morgan Riley he's also got a no movement clause so he might be in the John Tavares camp of it's just not possible because you know there's, there's not commanding to work with there but you know I, I came away thinking that if Dubas you know if we get word in a couple of days time that, that Dubas is signing an extension I mean it, it seems like it, it could be a lot of fireworks you know just based on kind of the emotion with which he spoke he acknowledged he's sort of disappointed that things didn't work out I mean we've said it time and again, but he bet on these guys, right? He's, he's backed them con- consistently, continually. I think he's done a pretty good job of finding other players to play with them and getting created with the cap and, and, you know, keeping them being a top team in the league. And they just, they haven't got it done when, when it mattered most. And so it feels to me like we're going to see that the Leafs as, as they've been in a different form. If, if Kyle Dewis is, is making that call, uh, you know, in these next few weeks. CJ, when all the players get wheeled out there, did you find it odd that none of them, like even mention the idea of not getting it done. It was just, it was kind of so matter of fact. It was like, yeah, we had some chances, like not one guy, like, and I didn't expect the Leon dry cycle where he's like, this is all on me, but it's like, they all couldn't see behind the, the chances and line rushes and just say, you know what? We didn't get it done. Are you surprised you didn't hear that? Or is that just par for the course? Well, it's par for the course, but I, I continue to be surprised by that. I was surprised by that, frankly, as that series started going sideways with the Panthers, that the comments were aimed at kind of the media versus maybe a little bit more inward looking. Um, because quite frankly, I, I think that that's been the culture that, that that's kind of been, been allowed to develop here because they've had that support, right? They've had so much unwavering support from management um, and, you know, everything's kind of gone in their favor. I mean, maybe that's, Maybe that's part of the shock that, that you need to happen by changing things up, right? I mean, I DJ, think that, that culture starts when they're 13 years old because if you're a stud hockey player, you've got everyone kissing your rear end and everything is handed to you all the way up and it's filtered into the NHL and you get handed millions of dollars and then sooner or later you got to look in the mirror and say, was that on me? And they don't know how to do it because their whole adult lives leading up to this point, all they've been told is how good they are. And everyone just hands them everything. And that's just what, that's what happens. And it's filtered into the NHL and they have a difficult time saying that's on me. Well, they, they do, but I mean, that, maybe that starts to change if, if someone gets traded, right? If, if things truly get shaken up, um, if they're held to that level of responsibility, I, I think it is possible. I mean, look, I, I get along with all these guys individually. I think we can all appreciate that they have immense talent and that's how they've gotten to where they are in the world and with this team. But I, it's just the mix isn't working, right? It, it, the same thing has happened again and again and again. you got seven games to finish the playoffs with two goals. And, and you know, if you look at the, the, the course of their, their record in these elimination games, it's always the, the offense that, that goes away. Um, you know, I, I just think it's time to try something new to shock the system to, you know, you're not trading all of them. I think that would be crazy, but I think, I think it's time to, to, to try a different course of action here, much like Florida did last year, right? Florida, Florida had a pretty busy off season after winning, winning the president's trophy last season. And it's, Serve them pretty well as they prepare for the Eastern Conference Final. Could you see the John Tavares situation playing out in a similar way to the end of the Matt Sundin era? In what sense? In terms of the fans wanting him to wave. Muskoka won. But he won't. Yeah. Like, it, different context because Matt's, it was about ending the era. Fans wanted them to blow it up, get the picks and the prospects. But like a lot of people are focused on Tavares and that eleven million, and I feel like that's going to be a part of the conversation, like fairly or unfairly. And I think a lot of it likely unfairly 
It's like, well, they're going to say it's 11 million. How could we possibly get value out of that coming down the stretch here? Because you're well, simply not getting 11 million. No kidding. Not. The thing is, too, is William Nylander needs a new contract. Austin Matthews needs a new contract. And if they squeeze every ounce of money out of those deals, 11 million is. It gets bigger it, it looks and rich, bigger. Like it looks and tough, bigger. right? Yes. That, that, that's kind of the relation uh, I'm trying to bring into the fold here. Could you see that playing out in this market? I, I guess it could. I mean, the thing is, is that the Matt Sundin one, I think a lot of the frustration was because the team wanted to rebuild and, and were yeah. unable to, right? I mean, I guess now we're talking about that some might perceive their, their inability to, to build up enough or to, to be, you know, to advance the program being the issue there. I mean, this contract has actually aged reasonably well. Uh, you know, they're, they're five years into a seven year deal and he had 80 points this year. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's not as though we're talking about a player whose skill has completely abandoned him. But, you know, it is, we are at the point too, though, where I think probably next season or as we see how the offseason goes, and we're going to be talking about him moving to the wing, about, you know, where do they find another play driving center to, to play behind Matthews, all those sorts of things. And so, you know, he's a, his career is evolving and shifting, and he's still being paid uh, like the guy that, that was a top player and a former Hart Trophy finalist in the past. You know, but that's, that's kind of the risk you assume, I think, as a team that signs him. Um, and I don't, I don't know how the fans will, will eventually come to view that, but, uh, you know, Tavares couldn't have been more clear. I would say that, that he wanted to stay, that he wants to remain to the captain. And, uh, you know, there's, there's really that that's, he's, he's earned that right. There's nothing anyone can do, I guess, other than try to make it uncomfortable for him to, to change that viewpoint. DJ, you mentioned Tavares regular season. They all could talk about and boast about the regular season. The questions that I get from people walking around town is why is it so different in the playoffs? Why can you get 80 points and not get a goal in a series that means so much? And then they look on the other side, and it's Sam Bennett, where it's like, that guy's not going to rip home 35, but why is he so impactful? So they can all talk about how good their regular season was, but the problem is, why is it so different? Why does it look so different? Do you think it's style of play? I mean, you're better served, I think, to analyze that, but it seems to me that the game's tighten up. The kind of goals that are scored are a little greasier, a little bit more having to fight your way to the net. I, 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 I have put it under one umbrella, Chris, and it's just getting it done. You're talented. There's ways to do it. It's just you got to find a way to do it. It's, it's like everybody knows the style of play in the playoffs. You'd be nuts to go into a playoff series not understanding how it's played or what's going to happen. It's finding a way. It's very simple. They're all talented enough, but can you find a way? It's fair. I mean, Leon Dreisaitl scored, what, 12 or 13 goals this playoffs, and he's done two after two rounds. I mean, it's, 13, yeah. it's, it's hard. I'm certainly not making excuses for them. I think, you know, I've been applying the heat on them. I think it's fair. It's part of what you sign up for when you're a star player on a team with this kind of ambition. But uh, I think the troubling part is that it's, it's been so consistent. I, I, I think you always – you don't go into any playoffs thinking all your players will be clicking at the same time. You're going to be Harlem Globetrottering it out there. But the, the Leafs have been built. I believe with the idea that, okay, Matthews might get cold or snake bitten for a couple games, but you know, that's where Tavares Nylander picks him up. But it's just, you know, you look at the Florida series and, and you know, it, it went dormant. I, I know Nylander scores a big goal at the end to get you to overtime in game five. You know, he also had one in, in, in Mitch too, in, in game four, but it, it just feels like they, they don't have enough when it, when it really matters. And so I think that's why you got to reimagine that mix and try to find some other players to, to bring a secondary wave. And, you know, as Kyle Dewis mentioned, if they can get some prospects that come in and make a difference in our own entry level contracts, that's going to go a long way too, uh, to, to, you know, changing the fortunes of the team. Yeah. That factors into the evaluation of Dubas, right? Where on the surface, it's difficult for people to really understand. Like I, I can't tell you if Fraser Minton is going to be a player, right? right? If, if Roni Harvinen is going to be a guy that comes up, like there's guys that they have, but it looks like Nyes is going to be a player. Nyes right? looks so good. You're, you're Wall be, looks good. Right. Well, that's two but, guys. I, I, they need it. Like I, I that's part of the management. Out. I'm going to throw this out here, CJ. Do you think you know who's open for business? Is the Winnipeg Jets? Be interesting to see. They're going to be willing to part with some of their, some of that core. Yes. You know that a core. Is it a radioactive core? Calgary, you think is well. I'm looking just, to mingle. All I'm, all, all I'm saying they need is, to hire a GM, but I think that they'd be willing to to shake things up after the way things have gone there. That it, that, that's what I was pointing to. It's this just isn't in Toronto. This is, you know, it's a scenario where Edmonton's a little bit different because those guys have a little bit of term left and the guys, R&H is at $5 million and Hyman's got term. And, but it, I'm looking at 
Winnipeg, where the reaction of the coach is like, we've got something going on here that we might have to change. You know, Calgary didn't make the playoffs. They need a general manager. There are some teams that are going to be willing trade partners for top-end talent. Now, again, it comes back to who is that that Kyle is willing to part with here or is going to be forced to part with here? Well, and let's look back last summer. Like when, when Matthew Kachuk got traded, I don't think anyone would have guessed it was Florida and for the return right. when that first surfaced. I mean, that, that's how it materialized. I mean, really, Kyle Dubas has just signaled to the entire league, we'll at least take your call on Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. And to my knowledge, that had never happened in the past. Like As much as no. there might have been lots of talk in the media about it, I don't think they ever did even that thought experiment. I don't, I don't think they ever even had just like, what if? kind of phone calls with other teams. Well, they're at least going to have those phone calls now. And so who knows, there could be a team out there that we're not even thinking about or is on our radar that is looking to make more of a move than, than would be apparent. And, and, you know, it sets up for a pretty fascinating off season to see if, what they can get done, because I would say this too, if Dubas is back, it's hard to imagine he can return with all of the, the, the four forwards. It, it, you know, when you, when you make the remarks he did, it, it almost puts him in a spot where I think he's, he's got to make a move. Um, because he's, he said that they need one. Yeah, to say nothing of all the other free agents, right? Like, there's right. a lot of guys who are going to be on their way out here. Right. And, I mean, you got a lot of roster spots. Like, you have yeah. some money. You have flexibility. You're some right. Some flexibility. But that's a story for a different day, and that's coming. Like, what they're going to do with bunting, what they do with, you know, a number of different guys, um, including a net. Yeah. That day will come when we start talking about Matt what they Murray? do with the goaltending. DJ, thanks for your time today, pal. Love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, DJ. There he is, Chris Johnston, joining us here on the Maple Toyota Hotline. Build your next dream Toyota at Maple Toyota. Check out Maple Toyota's pre-owned inventory arriving daily. It's time to Toyota. Visit mapletoyota.com. Yeah, it's a tough one. Coast to coast, man. The Leafs are out. The Oilers are out. No Canadian content into the conference final. Yeah. Nothing. Give a bleep meter below zero. <laughs> it's wild, man. It's wild. Like, come on. got to be kidding me. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was opportunity. These teams are good teams. Like there's a like you, they just joined a long list of teams that were very good that believed that they could have gone the distance. Boston, Colorado, Rangers, you know, who else did you believe that that could have been there? A lot of heavy hitters out, man. And, heavy and hitters. Uh, some guy sent me a tweet saying a lot of elite players are out. Yeah. It's I true. always had the belief you got to have the elite talent. It's been proven the last four or five years. A lot every every yeah. year in hockey, you got to have that elite talent. Yeah. But maybe this year it's just going to be the best team. Team. Yeah. All the way through. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, Florida, Carolina tonight. You got a game seven. Seattle, Dallas, and yeah, uh, maybe that Barkov goes nuts. Waiting. Maybe he goes nuts in the last. Well, that's the thing. Like Eichel's still player. there. You still got Stone there. Well, if power. you get if you get if you get Dallas through, you still got. Big names. I mean, oh yeah, but it, it just it. What it is is he up here. Obviously, you identify with stuff. Here's the other fail that I. Why the hell did you have a ten o'clock game last? Well, that obviously that was so ridiculous. insane. Insanity. I don't care if they were afraid of Sunday night baseball with that type of talent on display out in Edmonton. That is insane. I don't. That know is insane. That. Yeah, whoever made that call, you and with all due respect to all of Jamie's homies out in Edmonton. Make it eight thirty or something. Oh, they would have been. It's a Sunday. No one's like no one's. Somebody coming make it eight. What's wrong with eight thirty? Obviously, that should have been the case. But it sounds as if you know it was an ESPN thing. They have Sunday night baseball. They want to put it on ESPN too. But then the baseball game went so long that it started on ESPN two anyway. It matter like the and point being is you've got one game, you've got the face of your league playing. Yeah, it's crazy. And the NBA and game was early it, in the 10 afternoon. Ten o'clock Eastern. Yeah, there was I a... got saddled up in the sack, and I was ready. Guess how much I got in? Not even puck minutes. drop. 18 minutes. Not even puck drop. Not even puck drop. That, that was my <laughs> assumption. You woke up to it? Not right? even puck I drop. I had to PVR it. I'm like, I can't stay up. Yeah. Yeah, well, did you see what happened with the Live Golf yesterday, too? They went to I a, heard there was some weird stuff. Going well, it went to a, a three-player playoff. It was DJ at the top. Yeah, DJ it? ended up yeah. winning it, and I think it was Brendan... <laughs> Grace and, it sounds uh, like it's going to be goofy. Cam Smith. Well, they're on the C dub, right? Like whatever that is. Don't tell me they interrupted like a four foot. Play. They left. They left the C like because there was a there was a rain delay, yeah. and it it hit like the end of the show, and a lot of the different local affiliates just said thank you, 
during the playoffs. Turned it on. It started where playing. You have to, like, I told you no. guys about Struddy on there doing a bantam double C game, and Bobby McKenzie was sitting there saying, why aren't we? Here's like, the difference. We were delayed for Struddy doing a bantam double C game. I think it's yeah. because Live Golf pays the C-dub <laughs> to put it on. When Struddy comes on tomorrow, after we get through the Edmonton autopsy, Bring up that time where he was calling that oh, yeah. game. His bald I was head on the was panel. in the intermissions, and he was just I, like, yeah, oh, that was a great period. I was on the panel with Roberto Luongo. It was me and Roberto, I believe, and Bobby Mack. And we were waiting and waiting, and Struddy was calling a Bantam game. It was insanity. People were writing to us. But the point is, that's TSN's policy. They're not leaving a live well, exactly, event. Exactly, because it's a live it's event. A live and event. I think, you know, you've paid for those properties. I get it. Where the C-dubs, like, what do we care? Greg Norman, you can call us off the hook. You're <laughs> out of here. We got uh, Dawson's Creek reruns we got to play. It was See unbelievable. Um, all right, Ray's coming up. Ray Ferraro will join us. Yankees are in town. Jay's coming off a big sweep. Positive Monday on that front. And uh, we're continuing to recap what happened with the Leafs and, and possibly where it goes. Uh, CJ was down there. He said it was a different vibe today, like very Big different time. vibe. And take that for what it's worth. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Keegan will join us. Keegan Matheson from the park in about an hour. Jay's coming off a big weekend, and he got the Yankees in town. So we'll get to that. we got Ray coming up as well. Ray Ferrar will join us in about a half an hour. Ray's going to be bummed out. He, he was feeling good about the Oilers and the Leafs. Well, he said the cup will end in Canada. So, obviously, he's fighting with people on Twitter because people are pulling back that comment and saying, you said that last week or two weeks. When was he on? Last week or two weeks uh, ago? It was, yeah, it was before the second round started, I think, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well. I, Listen, it was a good, I, I, I hear actually, what he was saying. I, 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 I don't know. with him, too. I thought that, I thought, I felt in my for some reason in my head, I was like, there's a chance that Edmonton and Toronto could end up on a collision course. And I actually was kind of excited about it because I was like, it'd be kind of neat. Maybe Struddy would fly in, would have some fun, or maybe we go out there. Like, it would be, I, I don't know. I was kind of just getting ahead of myself, obviously, but. Now, not even an, into a conference final. Well, maybe we go to Vegas. Well, you reset, and you're like, what Canadian teams are going to be in the hunt next year? I, I think the Leafs will still be good. I, I Edmonton will still be good. I think Ottawa's going to be better. but we'll Ottawa get better. Not cup contention, though. I don't see that. I don't see Vancouver cup contention. Winnipeg, I don't know what's going to happen there. The Habs are not close. Flames, can they reset? Get back in? Well, Possibly. To, Flames have a... If, they, if their top players have bounced back years, the goalie... The defenseman, even like a guy like Uyghur, who had had a career year the year before, Huberto, Lindholm. That's a lot. Well, but and Kadri, all of those, yeah. all of those guys who had had career years the year before had off seasons last year. The only guy who had an unbelievable year for them was Toffoli. I think he had his career high in goals. Outside of that, everyone else was Mangiapane. I always believe back. in the rebound because everyone has a bad season, but to think of all those guys collectively to bounce back at the same time well, is they, a big ask. They better be better. Of what course. Like you can't, I don't know, is there going to be somebody that gets I don't know. they got to bring Hubert somebody in that their style's like. they the, 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 they got to they gotta like their style. Hubert are going to go from 56 points to 41. I would argue he probably no. goes back to go the 80 or, you know, yeah. or more. So it be interesting to see. Yeah, a lot of moving parts up here, man. A lot of moving parts. Getting some pushback Up in here. Canada. Sam Cicerello said that he produced that game with Stretty. So, oh, is that right? When it went on the to double panel. OT? And well, it wasn't, wasn't even double OT. When, what was it? It, it was, was a lot. It was insanity. Like, it was literally, <laughs> you're trying to get an NHL game on, and Stretty's talking about Bantam hockey players. It was insanity. Well, what are you going to do? That was a long time ago. We'll have Struddy on tomorrow. A lot of disappointment in Edmonton. Yeah. A lot of disappointment. Right? Yeah, McDavid put forth a, an absolutely incredible season. Dry saddle was great. Yeah. You get into the second round. Now, Vegas, like Vegas, I think, was was being... They're a good team. Yeah, and I don't think they were getting enough love. They like, weren't, but I, st I thought those two guys were unstoppable, Hayes. I did not think that anything could stop them. Yeah. Especially when you throw Aiden Hill in net. I was like... No one's stopping the Edmonton Oilers right now. Yeah, I just That's don't the, know what I don't know what Edmonton 
like those guys aren't going anywhere. Like no one's coming out saying we got to change. No. Like our main pieces, like they, McDavid and Drysaitel. But but you look at their their salary structure. Like RNH had a hundred points, he makes five million. Hyman had a career year at eighty points, he makes five point five. Kane's at four and a half with his contract situation. Like their their contracts are quite nice. Is Kane you know? up? No, he has One two more. more years, I think. Didn't he sign a four-year deal? Yeah, he's got term. I think he's, he's got, got term. Hyman's got term. Like it, it's Eugene more, Hopkins, Nurse. They have to change some things. Like, they, you know, their goalies have to be better. Yeah, absolutely. I think their D need a, need a, some upgrading. I think Ekholm's good. I think Bouchard's going to be fine. But what kind of risk is that, Jamie, when you have those players as good as they are at the top end? Like, Ask Nathan McKinnon. Same thing. No, I, uh, you're right. But what happens if you say, okay, the goalie's got to be better. The Skinner's going to be a year older, and maybe Jack Campbell's settled in. And, Evans, and what if they're not, though? Yeah, you're that, right. That, there's, you risk, have, there's so much risk to but, all of it, whatever you do. This is why I believe every team should have a three-pack. A three-pack that can play. Like I said, Vegas is going to play Aiden Hill. Knowing that, yes, it's an aged Jonathan Quick, but that's still Jonathan Quick sitting there. Like, that's the thing. They, they've actually, they, they found a way to play with five goalies this year, and all five of them got wins for that. That speaks to the system. Cassidy deserves a lot of credit there. Yeah. Because they've had injuries. Now I know, here's the narrative. At, at, over the weekend, I don't know if you guys read this, Gary Bettman wants to screw the league. You know, don't do that. The refs have screwed everybody. I can't, I can't even read and this. And here's the other anymore. one is that Vegas – Cap manipulated, what are they at? A hundred million dollar cap and yeah. Mark Stone comes back and yes, probably. Like it is crazy probably. that and and listen, credit to them because the rules were put in place. You know, the owner, Bill Foley, my guy, I've always been a big yeah. fan. <laughs> he wanted a chance to be competitive. And the yeah. league looked at that and said that's probably good for business. Sure. Like the old draconian expansion rules. When you look back on it, silly because teams were just so bad for so long, and it was such a difficult time to get off the mat. Yeah, but Vegas just played within the rules in terms of acquiring who they acquired. Look at Marcia. So again, last night he has a hat trick. Natural. Riley yeah. Smith has a goal last night. Thank you, Florida. Now Florida's yeah. in a conference final, but those two guys were on the cheap there. Exactly. But Vegas has been in the conference final four times in six years, and they've already been to a Cup final, and now Seattle is a game away from a conference final in their second year. That is incredible. It is. Like, is it aggravating yeah, it <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, it's a In a league. city like this, when you're like, okay, Toronto can't get to a conference final. They haven't been able to do that in a long time. But that's on the Leafs. Right. right? And that's on the other teams to figure it out. And yeah. they were supposed to have a head start in terms of who they had already in the system and who they had on their team. That would at least make you say, maybe we got to think of a way to do this differently. Like, well, wouldn't it? Uh, listen, Vegas, what Vegas has done ever since they got into the league was be aggressive. At times, I think overly aggressive. Yes. But they kept going and going and going. They showed no loyalty to anyone. They didn't like you. Gone. Yeah. Like Gerard Gallant was two coaches ago. <laughs> two coaches ago, Gerard Gallant. He brought them to a cup final in their first season. He's two coaches ago. Barry Gallant. Jerry Gallant. He was yeah. coaching when Keefe was here in Toronto. Yeah. Like, like that's just to use that but, as an well, like a, a timeline example. It comes back to, and I was chatting with Keith uh, about this, is like this is a massive, massive market. Like one of the biggest in pro sports, period. So how often, like I don't mind that somebody, the manager – is saying like change or something has to give here. That's based, I'm paraphrasing, because I don't know if Manchester United, I don't know if the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know if the New York Yankees have gone seven years and didn't have the success and didn't demand change. The market, the owners, you name it. Like this is why I think there is going to be change here because something has to give. This is one of the biggest markets in pro sports. And if it hasn't, had success, they're going to want answers and people should answer for it. They're, I, I think somebody's going to be, for lack of better words, carnage of this second round loss. I don't know if it's the coach. I don't know if it's one of the core four. I don't know if the manager comes back. Like there's lots of questions that is going on here. Yeah. And as of now, the timeline, I guess has to be 
within the next you know couple of weeks. Right. Right. Because if Dubas isn't here and and Dubas he got emotional speaking about his family and yeah and like that's the nature of of that job. Like these are humans and it's tough. Yeah. Like it's tough, man. And he's a public figure and people are on him and wow. Like it's not easy. Right. It's not easy. And no. and it should never like families should never be involved in any capacity. But that's what happens. You yeah. know, like sometimes people are morons, people are stupid and they, they act. I don't know. I can't even explain why you would bring in to play anyone's family. That's a public figure. You, you can't you just even, like their job or whatever. Yeah, Go ahead. You, you but can't like, even start to ex- try to explain someone's behavior because it's just the norm. It, 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 people are more wrong. You can't explain it. It's you disgusting. can't explain it. But right. I understand why he's he's emotional about that. And I okay, you're gonna figure that out. You're gonna see where it goes. But if in the next, I think you need an answer in the next like week, week and a half. Absolutely. And then you got to figure out what you're gonna do with the coach and the coaching staff. And then you prepare. For Bedlam, like it all happens within like two to three weeks. Very fast. Right? It's quick. Like that cup gets handed out and it is go time. Drafts you got to put forth your plan. Yeah. Yes. Drafts around the corner. They've got a lot of things. Who are you going. drafting? Who are you signing? Who are you maybe trading? Who are, you know, all that kind of stuff is by July 10th, less than two months from now, we're going to know exactly what they've done. Yep. So they got to be on it. And, and not that we're telling them anything they don't know. No. Like they're well aware of that. But. Uh, the, the it has the chance to be crazy. Well, Brandon, but I'll Shanahan, believe it when I see it because I've thought that in past years and it it didn't happen. But Brandon Shanahan coming out here in the next couple of days, he might give you a little bit of a window into what he's thinking, what the organization is thinking, or the direction of it. He he holds the keys. You were saying it early. I don't disagree. Him and Austin Matthews hold different sets of keys, but they they're tied together in this situation moving forward. Because you got to deal with Kyle Dubas and you got to deal with your star player. And that's going to happen a lot sooner than you think. In the yeah. next six weeks, yeah. Austin Matthews wants an extension. No question. So he says today. Yeah, right? exactly. And okay, take it at take face it at value. Face value. Why not, right? For sure. But so, <laughs> it's got to happen. Exactly. Got to happen. All right, Keegan Matheson from the park ahead of Jays Yankees tonight. Alec Manoa on the mound, and Ray Farrar will join us in about 15 minutes on the Leafs, the Oilers. Game seven tonight, Dallas, Seattle. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Something to Chew On is brought to you by Boston Pizza's new playoff menu developed using Fanalytics. BP's run the numbers to optimize your game time experience, like ensuring it's six pickles per plate when you order the new fried pickle wedges and appy that passes the eye test and the taste test. Is it BP for puck drop tonight? We're asking which Canadian NHL franchise is more likely to have a major overhaul this season, the Leafs or the Oilers? We've kind of been touching on this topic a little bit. I think it's more likely the Leafs. Like I think Woodcroft returns, I believe. McDavid and Dreisaitl are clearly coming back. I think Matthews and Marner are going to be back with the Leafs. But I just think there's more question marks in Toronto based on contract status of the general manager and and Matthews and Nylander. Like, I think there's just more question marks that need to be answered in the next six weeks. Right, and Keith's been here longer than Woodcroft. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the Leafs. The Leafs. You're on board with that? Yeah. yeah. Are you eye test? What was the other option for the pickles? Uh, taste test. Are you eye or taste? I prefer a taste test. I love a pickle. I'm not a pickle. I love a fried pickle. See, I'm not a big fried pickle guy, personally, but I... I Got to check these out, man. Fried pickled wedges. Ooh. That sounds All phenomenal. In. Yeah, but anything deep fried. All phenomenal. in. You can deep fry a skate lace and eat it. It's because it's deep fried. <laughs> <laughs> like, deep fried, that is the classic move at the X. Yeah. They just deep fry everything. Anything. And that's like the theme. Yes. It's like we're deep frying paint this year. Like, <laughs> sounds awesome. And people will eat it. Yeah. For sure. Can I get some. But the pickles, I. I'm pickle. not a pickle guy. You're I'll not a pickle you. guy. I love a good pickle. But oh I God. don't mind the deep fried. Pickle? <laughs> are you right out of the... <laughs> yeah, I Are you a straight hand. pickle guy? Right out of... What do they call that? The, the, the jar? The water in there. The liquid oh, the, in there. The pickle juice? I don't know what it's brine, called. Brine. That's it. The brine? brine. He wipes I it mean, on his I, thigh. I, 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 I think doing that it, is brine. If I, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what you did. You went diving for pickles. I think yeah. it's brine. I think it's brine. For sure. Just admit you ate something on trade design and, and you got something on there. Hedge already told you what happened. No. We got to call her. 
See if we can call her at 6.45 to confirm. Okay. 6.50 men, just to get a quick little blurb, because I know know. that combo never happened. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Ray's coming up. Ray Ferro, his take on Game 7 tonight. What went wrong with the Leafs? What will happen in the future? What went wrong with the Oilers? What will happen in the future? And Jay's Yankees tonight. We'll get back into that. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050, soon to be up on TSN 2.